So if you don't have a question, let me go with the module three. And the first part of the module three is that you 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 learn about the package chasers, how it works with the package chaser. You have a sample video I want to uh, show it to you. Hello, everyone. We'd like to introduce you to an exciting and easy to use network simulation tool, Cisco Packet Tracer. This simulation tool provides amazing features, allowing you to build networks from scratch, open sample files from pre-built networks, test new and existing network designs, and even examine how data flows through your network. Now you can build networks that include servers, firewalls, routers and switches, and even wireless connections. But with Cisco Packet Tracer, it doesn't end there. Packet Tracer provides support for the Internet of Things. In the IoT, known as Internet of Things, devices and sensors that have never been connected before are now being connected. So look at the example I prepared here. This beautiful house has multiple devices connect to the network. Now I was just playing around with Cisco Packet Tracer and I've added smart lawn sprinklers, smart ceiling fans, smart door sensor, a smart thermostat, even a water level monitor, and a garage door and they're all interconnected. We can even set up a wireless router and switches and laptops, firewalls and computers, and new devices called our smart home gateway. With Cisco Packet Tracer though, we could either start from here, that blank screen, and build it from scratch, or we can even open up pre-built sample labs. These are pre-built sample labs with pre-built networks. To do it, we'd go to File, and then Open Samples. Within, we're gonna have a list of multiple folders where we can browse through different labs. In each of these folders are pre-built sample labs. For example, we have Server Labs. And in the Server Labs, we can see Security with AAA, DNS, File Servers, Secure Web Browsing, Email Servers, and even go into IoT registration servers for our IoT devices. For now, we're gonna head over to the PC directory and then the VPN folder. In the VPN folder, there's a VPN easy file that we can open up. This file gives us a basic VPN connection that we can test within Cisco Packet Tracer. We can follow the instructions to deploy our own VPN. Now, Packet Tracer is not a replacement for real physical equipment, but it's an excellent tool that allows you to build and model your own configurations. It also supports a lot of the technology required to practice for your Cisco certification exams. And good news, Cisco Packet Tracer is free of charge. This tool is available for both Linux and Windows operating systems. It's even available for mobile devices like smartphones and tablets. There's so many areas to explore in Cisco Packet Tracer. The best thing you can do right now is download and install the latest version and just start playing. The opportunities to learn technologies and build your skills are endless. So let's get going and let's do this. Okay, so I believe that I already instructed you how to how to uh, how to access to the package chaser page? How to how to download and install here? Right? So let's watch your video again. Hello, everyone. This is our Cisco Packet Tracer install walkthrough video, and this is going to be the I'm Learning page. This is going to show you any classes you're currently enrolled in. Now, if you don't have any classes here just yet, it's okay. You'll be able to experience the awesomeness later on. So here we are, let's go to the top right corner and we're gonna hover over resources and then go down and click on Download Packet Tracer. When you click on Download Packet Tracer, we're gonna see six options here. Two options for Windows, two options for Linux, and two options for mobile devices. Click on the corresponding version that you need for your machine. If you don't know if you have a 64-bit or 32-bit machine, you may have to do some online searching at this time. Once you find out if you have a 64-bit or 32-bit operating system, you can go ahead and click on the corresponding link. I have a 64-bit version of Windows, so I'm gonna click on the 64-bit download. 
When I click on it, I might get a pop-up. Your screen might automatically download. It depends on your browser. I'll click on Save File. The download will complete. You can go to your Downloads folder and locate the file to install, or you can utilize your browser's download section and click on the file to install. When you click on that file, we get our pop-up, and yes, we'll click on Run. This is a very straightforward install with Packet Tracer. When we get this next screen of, hey, it's next, let's just walk on through it. Go next, accept the Cisco agreement, continue on. Verify the install path, go ahead. The name that's gonna show up in your program shortcuts, that's great. Do you want a desktop quick launch icon? You get to pick. And finally, we get to review our settings and click on install. From here, Packet Tracer is going to install on your machine. It's a rather quick install for this. When Packet Tracer is done installing, we're going to be presented with a pop up. And this pop up is just a little verification of hey, Packet Tracer is going to integrate with your browser. Please make sure you close your browser or restart your machine. Here's that pop up. So let's just click OK. Launch Cisco Packet Tracer is checked by default. That's great. We'll click Finish. Now, Packet Tracer is going to open up automatically because of that checkbox. As it opens up here, we're going to be able to see an authentication page. Here it is. When Cisco Packet Tracer asks you to authenticate, you'll utilize your Netacad account here, or again, if you don't know it, you can utilize your email address tied to your Netacad account. In the password field, please just put in your password for Netacad and click Login. Now that we've successfully authenticated, Cisco Packet Tracer has opened up. We are good to go to build our own networks, complete our lab assignments, and have some fun. Yeah, I'm right back. Or if you did want that smartphone thrown in the trash, Hello everyone, this is our Cisco Packet Tracer getting started walkthrough video. In this video, we're going to go over a couple different menus within Packet Tracer, including toolbars and building your first network. Let's get started. Bottom left corner of Packet Tracer, we have different categories. We have network devices, and when you have network devices selected, down below we have specific subcategories. We have routers, we have switches, hubs, wireless devices, security, and even wide area networks. We have a different main category though, where we can switch from network devices to end devices. And when you click on end devices, now we have different subcategories. We have PCs and laptops, servers, phones, as a subcategory of end devices. We have another subcategory called home, where we even see things such as smoke detectors and fans and smart door and garage door sensors and lamps. We have another subcategory also known as smart city, further industrial, even further power grid. All of these being different type of devices you can utilize within Packet Tracer. Now besides network devices and end devices, we also have components. And this comes into play with small computer systems and Arduino boards, where you can deploy boards and actuators and even sensors. Think IoT, Internet of Things. Going further, we have connections, which includes many different types of cables, copper straight through cables, phone line cables, coax wires, and even fiber optic. Going further, we have the miscellaneous category. These are just commonly used routers and PCs that we see in Packet Tracer. Lastly, in this bottom left corner, we have multi-user connections, and this is where you can utilize multiple Packet Tracer applications connecting together through a real physical network to create larger labs. Kind of fun. So outside of this area of devices in the bottom left, we're going to start taking a look at the right side. On the right side, we have a couple tools that we can utilize. We have the select tool where I can drag and highlight groups of devices. I can move them around or delete them. 
I've got the place a note tool where I can click on this and I can create notes anywhere on my screen. This is helpful when you're building networks and reminding yourself with documentation of what you're doing and why you're doing it. I have a delete tool, which we're going to utilize in just a little bit, where I can delete groups of devices or individual devices. We have the magnifying inspect tool, and the inspect tool allows us to take a look at quick details of what a device is actually doing with our network. We can organize our devices by utilizing shapes where we can create squares and we can create even circles and ellipses and we can even draw your own shape. This is great for documentation and grouping devices in order to have a nice logical topology. Lastly, I can resize our shapes and also we can even do tests by adding in the PDU which allows us to do reachability tests very quickly. So let's get some devices on the board. What we're going to do is use our place slash select tool, and I'm going to go over and find a wireless router. That's network devices, wireless. In the wireless subcategory, I'll find my WRT300N wireless router. Now to get this in my logical workspace, I just have to click on it, and then click on my workspace, and now I have a wireless router. I want to have some machines as well, some devices to connect. So I'm going to go to end devices, click on my category. In the subcategory of end devices, I want a laptop. So I'll click on the laptop and click on the screen. Besides the laptop, I'd also like a PC. So I'll click on a PC as well and put that on my logical workspace as well. Now this is all great, but I'd like to have a more advanced network, something more akin to what someone would have at home. So I want a smart device, like a smartphone. I'll click on smartphone, and I'll put that on the topology too. Now, nothing is hooking up to the wireless router. I, I want, oh, there we go, there's one. The smartphone is hooked up, but the laptop and PC aren't. So I want to cable that PC to the wireless router. I'll go to connections, and I'm going to grab this third cable, which is known as a straight through. And with a straight through cable, I can click on the PC on the fast ethernet port, and then click on the wireless router and take one of its ethernet ports as well, like ethernet one. Now that laptop, that should be mobile. So why isn't that hooking to wireless? Well, that laptop has a network interface card. Let's check it out. I can click on the laptop and now we get our physical tab of the laptop here. We can physically look at the laptop. I can click the zoom in button and get a closer look at the laptop. It's got a network jack that's fast ethernet. So I wanna switch that out to wireless. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the power off button. The power light goes off. And then I can get rid of this NIC card by dragging it and dropping it onto the list. This is a list of different peripherals and cards that you can add to your laptop. When I drop it on the list, it is removed. Now you can click on any one of these items and Packet Trace will give me a description of what it is down below. I want a wireless card. Well, at the top, there's the WPC300N. If I click on that, it tells me this is a 2.4 gigahertz wireless interface. Awesome, I want it. So I'm gonna drag it and drop it on the laptop's NIC card area, and then I have to turn the power back on. And now since we have a wireless card installed and the power on the laptop is on, it hooks up via wireless to the wireless router. If you feel like you don't want any of these devices, you can just drag and select it. Then you can use your delete icon here on the far right side in that toolbar. Click delete and it says, yes, I can delete that laptop. Or no, I didn't want to. After you click that delete icon, you can actually now delete items using your cursor. If I don't want the smartphone, I can just click on it and now it's gone. If I accidentally deleted something, we have this top toolbar here, which includes anything such as new packet tracers, opening, save, printing, even an activity wizard we'll get to later, copying and pasting devices, which even copies and pastes their configuration, or we even have an undo and a redo button. There's a lot of things you can do here in Packet Tracer. It's best for you to start exploring right now. And if you make a mistake, don't worry. You have the undo button and it brings that smartphone right back. Or if you did want that smartphone thrown in the trash, redo and throw it away. So have some fun with Packet Tracer, explore, and just start playing. Okay, so basically uh, this video, uh, this kind of video here, the interface is quite, uh, it's old version. And uh, right now, if you uh, download and install the, the new package, so it, it, it's a new version here. 
So we we'll see from the beginning. <laughs> okay, so for the for the packet chaser, it, it is a simulation tool. So it can simulate uh, about the network, about the physical topology and logical topology also. And for this class, most most of the time you work with the logical here. Right? So uh, you have the option to build to build the network topology from the scratch from nothing here. Right? So you see, you have a many, many. Uh, the first thing is the network device here, and it's a network device. You can have the router, you can have a switch it, or, or hub, or the wireless uh, access port. Right? The second one is the end device here. For the end device, you can have the PC, or you can have the laptop, or the server. This one, and the third one for this class here, you have the connection. Right? So you see, you have the end device. End device it can be the computer, can be the server, printer, or or voice over IP phone, right? That is a device. And for for the network device, that is the, the device that you interconnect the end device together. It can be the router or the switch here, right? And in order to interconnect them together, you need the media, you need the connection here. It can be it can be straight through cable or crossover or optical cable. We'll talk about it later here. So basically, it you can you can build the uh, logical topology from the scratch here. So think about if, if you have the whole router and you want to connect it to the switch, and from the switch you you in the home in the home uh, network you might have the one PC and you you might have one laptop. You can you can build everything from from the scratch here. So we can think about this one. You can uh, group them together. Uh, you have the few color here. If you want to pick color, you select the color. Yep, right. Think about this one. So we want to group for this one here. You 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 can and you can use the tag here. You put it this way. It is a land here, right? or, or you can put it the end device. Okay. Now for the switch and the router, they are network device. So if you want, you can use this uh, one here, and I want another uh, color. So you can group them together and. You have highlight and you need the touch here to put it here. It is a network device. Okay, you can move around here. Okay, and the last, uh, the, the next thing is that you want to interconnect them together. And so we, uh, some, uh, some of the, it can be the wire connection or wireless here. For this one, I don't have the wireless access point. So that's why I need the, the wire connection here. So for this one, you can go with the you can go with the check through cable here. This one here, you can see you have the check through cable, right? You can click on, you go to the PC, you go to the fast internet, and you want to you click on the switch here. It, so if you want to connect it to the port zero slash five, you have to click on this one. And for the laptop, I want to connect I want to connect it to the uh, slash tab. I have to choose slash tab, right? And from the switch to the router, you can also you can use you want to connect it from the gigabit Ethernet zero slot one from the switch, and you connect it to the zero slot one in the router here. Okay, so that is the way you work with the with the package chaser from the from the scratch. And so you have a sum of the you you have a sum of the the option also. You might if you want to delete it, you click on this one here. You want to delete it, so we think. You want to delete the, 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 the cable here, click on this one, to delete it. Right? And you want to redo it, click on this one. Okay. And for the for the package chaser, you have the two modes. The first, the first thing is a real time here. You can see you can observe it here real time. And the second one is simulation. Simulation, you can you can see what is really going on for each of the package here. So think about let me complex the IP address here for the for the PC. Uh, I have 192. For this one, we will learn about what is the IP address and what is the subnet mark and default gateway later. And I complex this PC 192. Okay. So now I can I can I can use to put the information here. Tell that this one is 192.168.1.10. 
Huh? And I want I want to add information for this one on YouTube on CD on whatnot. Okay, so now you see I have the two PC here, they are on the same network and they interconnect them together by switch, right? So I can I can communicate I can communicate from the PC zero to the laptop zero here. So if I go to the common prompt, I can bring it here. My PC is 192.168.1.10, and I want to bring it to 192.168.1.30 here. Okay, so you see, it's going through here, right? You've got the reply here. So you see, in, in, the, in the real time, you can see, you can, you can check the connectivity right now, the two PC able to communicate together, right? Here, right? And in the case of the simulation, you can think about, you want to add the, uh, yeah, you go to the simulation. Uh, that is here. That's ICMP. ICMP is it, a ping message here. So you can see in the in the, in some simulation here, you can go directly to the to the packet. You can see what's going on here, right? So see for this one, he want to ping from the one eight two one sixty eight dot one dot ten, and he want to ping it to one eight two one sixty eight dot one dot twenty here. That is the layer three, and the layer three you have the IP address, and you can see in the layer two. You have the MAC address or physical address here. That is a physical address of the network interface of the PC0. And zip is the physical address of the network interface of the, of the laptop here. And in order to deliver it, you have to go to the port number one. Uh, the, sorry, port uh, part Internet Zero here. Right. So now I want to, to see what is going next. I click on this one here. So we see the next step is send it to the switch here. It's send it to the switch. Right. So if I want to if I want to examine what is in the in the packet here, I click it again. You see, when you go to the switch, you see, you don't have any layer three here because the switch is a layer two device. It only works with the layer one and layer two. So see, you don't have any IP address here anymore. You only have the physical address here. Okay, so now I want to see what is going nice. I click on this one. I click on this one, you see, right now it deliver it to the PC0, right? So I can click OK, see, already here, right? In layer and out layer here. It already have the, uh, sorry, in layer here that deliver from PC0 to the laptop. That's why you have not had to deliver to the 20 here, right? So when this guy receive it, you have to respond it by the out, out going here. So out going, this is the sort here. When dot 20 is the source and dot 10 here is the definition. And go on here. Okay, you see. So if you want to go back to real time mode, you just click on this one, you go back to the real time mode. And the simulation mode is very, very uh, helpful in the case you want to do with a troubleshooting. You want to see what's really going on, and what, what go wrong here, what went wrong here. Okay, and you have uh, you can have many, many things with a uh, package chaser. We'll talk uh, about it later. Okay, what happened this one? Now, you go to the device configuration. Modem all the way across the internet and going to the Cisco. Hello everyone, this is our Cisco Packet Tracer user interface walkthrough video. This is a pre-built network that I've put together and we're going to go through and get comfortable with the options and the menus inside of Cisco Packet Tracer. So first off, we have the topology, the network is here. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we're going to use the magnifying glass at the top of the screen and click it two or three times and we're going to zoom in. Now as you do that, your lab might fall off the screen. So you can use your scroll bars on the right and on the bottom and to get your recentered. After you're recentered with your lab, we want to go a little bit deeper. Let's take a look at what we can do inside of Cisco Packet Tracer with this network. Now, we have these cables that are here. The wireless router is cable to the cable modem. The cable modem is cable to the internet and so forth. I'd like to see what ports they're plugged into. It would be nice to know. So what we can do is click on options at the top followed by preferences. Inside of preferences we get a large window. You can resize it. Just scroll your cursor over to the corner of the window and you can actually drag and resize this window. Inside of here we see many different options that exist. We're not covering them all. We're going to go through the basics. With the packet tracer preferences here, the common one we like to check mark is always show port labels and logical workspace.
Okay, this, this option is very, very useful here. You think about this one, if you want to see which port you connect to the device here, right? So we can go to the option, you click the preference here. Uh, in that one, you, you click on this one here, and so it's show port label in the logical here. So right now we see from the PC0, you connect to the switch, but in the, in the, in the topology, you don't know which connect to what part of the switch here. But uh, if I click on this one, you see, you know that for the PC, it connect to the street by the port F0 slash 5 here. And from the laptop, it connect to the to the street by the F0 slash 10 here. It's very, very helpful when you work with the packet system. Right. And another thing is that you can another thing is that you can you can change the port here. So if it's too small, you can increase it to 10. Uh, you can increase it to 10 and it totally is up to you. Logical Workspace is just the place that we're in right now, showing off those devices. We're going to check mark that one. We want to see the port labels. Also, inside of here, if you want to, you can turn off what are called link lights. Link lights are those green and red flashing little balls of light that tell you if the port is up or if it's down. If you want to have a cleaner interface and not see live if the port is up or down, you can turn that off. We'll do that temporarily just to have a cleaner picture. So with always show port labels checked, with show link lights unchecked, there's no apply button, just close the window. And here we have our network now a little bit cleaner. We get to see the port numbers for how things are cabled, and also we actually do not have the green balls of light anymore, which is showing us that the ports were up versus being down. So let's continue. We see that the PC is connected on port 01 of the wireless router. Port 00 of the wireless router goes to the cable modem. The cable modem is connected to the coax connection to the internet, and then the internet has an FA5 port that connects to FA0 on our Cisco.com web server. That's great to see. Let's actually take a look at some of the devices. You can go ahead and actually click on the wireless router. When you click on the wireless router, it opens it up to what's called a physical view. We see these tabs at the top, and we're in what's the physical tab. The physical tab gives you a physical representation of what this wireless router looks like. And again, there's some zoom in and zoom out features where you can zoom in by clicking the button. And we can take a closer look at this wireless router. We see there's four ports on the back, followed by also an internet port in blue. Now that's nice to see, but let's do something with it. Well, there's another tab. Go to the config tab, and inside of here, we can do some basic settings and configuration of the wireless router. You can click through the different options and take a look at them, but they have to deal with how the LAN interfaces work, how the internet interface works, how the wireless is configured and set up on it. But that's really not too real world. That's just an easy area to go in and change settings, this config tab. What's more realistic, though, is the GUI tab. I love it. When you go to the GUI tab, check it out. This looks like a very similar wireless router that you may have used yourself at home or a small office. Inside of here, we have tabs for different settings we can configure, from basic setup for networks and DHCP, a tab for wireless to deploy a wireless network name, even sub-tabs for wireless security, wireless MAC filtering, also, you can even control the administration of this wireless router itself. It's got an administration tab. You'll be able to get comfy. The key thing is, as you make any changes, be careful. Always scroll down to the bottom of whatever screen you're on and see if there's a Save Settings button. If you make changes and you don't click Save Settings, you will lose what you just changed. When you're done playing around in that section, you can close off that window and be done with the wireless router. In the meantime, though, let's actually do something. Let's have some fun. We'll go onto the PC, which is on port gig zero, connected to zero one of the wireless router. On this PC, again, we start with the physical tab. Here's the physical PC. If I scroll down, we'll actually see the NIC card on the PC. That's it at the bottom, that gray port. If you want to, you can actually turn off the PC by clicking the red button. You can drag that card and drop it on the list on the left. And you can pick a new card. You can click on any one of those cards and it'll change at the bottom of your screen and show you details about the card that you clicked on. You can actually pick and choose and customize your own packet tracer devices. This is amazing. 
Besides that, again, we have a config tab. We're going to do basic configuration of our machine. But for more realistic, you can click on the desktop tab. We will see a full display here of different applications you can run on your packet tracing machine. For example, I can click on IP configuration and I can set up here DHCP, pull an address, or I can manually assign an address with static. Same with IPv6. I can close out my IP config window and I can open another one like web browser. And in web browser here, I can actually type in cisco.com and it should connect to the cisco.com server that's running on this packet tracer topology. I'll click go and we'll see if it connects. There it is. This is actually the packet tracer PC going through the wireless router out to the cable modem all the way across the internet and going to the cisco.com web server and back. You need to spend time playing and practicing in Cisco Packet Tracer. This great tool has so many features, it's time to practice and make your own network. <clears throat> okay, so basically when you work with Packet Tracer, you have something you, uh, you, you should know here. So if you want to do the configuration, if you want to do the web sub chain in configuration for out for route or the street, or, 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 or the computer, you can click directly on the device, here, right? So think about if you want to set the IP address for the computer, directly click on the computer. And from this one here, you see you have many, many interface, right? This one is the one you want to prepare, uh, you want you to set the IP address here, or you can you can simulate by the common prompt in the, in the real device here, you see? In the common prompt, in the real device, you, you go to this interface, right? But it's a, in the in the package chaser here, you can go to this one. That is the simulation for, for the common prompt, and you can do everything with the, the common prompt here. Huh? And and you see, you have many options here. You have the physical here. It is a physical uh, 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 layout of the PC here, and you can turn it on and turn it off. Or you can see you have many many interface here, and if you want. If you want to change, uh, if you want to change the, the interface, you can you can uh, turn off the computer and you drag out and drag in here. And for each interface, you can see when you click on the each interface here, you, you look on this one. It has the sum of the short decryption here. What is the function of the interface? So you see for this one here, it is a wireless interface, here, right? And you can have the other, other one. You can click on the one. This one is other uh, other uh, eleven. It is for the telephone connection. You have the sum of the config here for this one also. You can you can manually configure the IP address or this one is more common here to use for the for the PC right? IP configuration or the or the common problem. Now that is a PC for the for the router on street also. You just directly click on the street or router right? directly click the street and router. So we see you have the physical here. So we can see clearly for this one you have the twenty four port. A part Ethernet here. You have the two of the gigabit Ethernet here. Or you can zoom it out. You can see. You can see it really here, right? So each of the port you have the port number one, number two, number three, number four, and so on. And you have the twenty-four port for this one. And you have the two port of gigabit Ethernet. And you have the corporate also. That is where you want to do with the some initial corporation. And if you want to do with the real device, normally you work with the common line interface here, right? You have the common line interface. So from this one, you can change the name for the suite and you build everything with the configuration. The same is after also. Uh, you have the physical and you have the COI here. The COI that means the, uh, the, the common uh, uh, common line interface. Here. Okay, so I want to, to, to talk a little bit about the configuration. I want to do a little bit about the configuration for the street or router. Right? So if you want to do configuration for street router, you click on this one, you go to the COI here. So I want to talk about the I want to talk about IOF mode. IOF mode. IOF, what is IOF? IOF is an internet operating system for the for all of the Cisco device, network device. You have IOF here. IOF, all of them in the capital. It is internet, internet operating system. So 
for every computer, you know, you, you must have the you must have an operating system, right? It can be the uh, Windows or can be Linux or 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 or, or, or Mac OS here, right? The same, the same with uh, all of the network device. They also have the operating system system here to interface with the end user and to control the hardware here, right? So for every Cisco device, you have iOS instead of Windows. It have the name is iOS. It's the Internet Operating System here and Normally, to in the order to configure for the for the network device here for the Cisco, right? You you have some of the mode here. The first thing when you the first thing when you the first time when you log into the switch or the router, you have you have the mode. You have the problem here. You have the problem. Uh, uh, let me see here. Okay. The first thing when you log into the switch or router, you have the problem of greater greater than here. Greater than. That is the user access mode. User access mode. Basically, for this mode, it's very, very limited authorization. You, you almost cannot do anything with this one. So from here, user access mode. If you want to go further more, uh, you have to change it to the you have to change it to the pre privilege exact mode here. So in order to do that, you have to put the, the command here, enable. So when you put the command enable. You go to the from it is a power here or hash here that it is a privilege. Exactly. This is a privilege. I can more you have the more power, more authorization to do with the with the, the router was here. Right? So now if you want to if you want to do with the compression, you if you want to change the host name, you want to set the password, or you want to to set the IP address, you have to go to the mode is a global configuration mode. And in order to go from the privilege exact mode to the global configuration mode, you have to put the command here, config. Terminal. Terminal. Uh, so with that, when you put when you enter the config terminal, you will go to the config here. And you have to hash here. That is where you stand in. In the global compression mode, in the global compression mode here. So let me let me do it with the uh, let me do it with uh, the the packet chaser here. So you can you can you can you can see it here, right? So now we see. Right now I I have a greater than mode here. I have a greater than mode in the you can see I, you can see my sheet and greater than here, right? So greater than here that means right now. I am in exact user, user, exact mode. Ah, so what you see in the user exact mode, what can I do with the user exact mode? Let me see. Uh, let's see. So in order to know what I can do with user exact mode, I can use the question mark here. The question mark can tell you that you I'm able to do some very, very limited command with very for many. Right? So now Right now, I'm standing in the user exit mode. I want to go to the I want to go to the privilege exit mode here. I put the enable command, here. enable command, and I hit enter. I see when I hit the enable command and I hit enter, it change it change it from the greater than to the to a hash from here. You see, it's a hash from here, power here, right? So when we see the the hash from or the power here, that means I'm here right now. I am in the privilege. That mode. Okay, so now if you see from the privilege exact mode, what can I do here? What's the command I can do it with the privilege exact mode here? I put the question mark again, and you see, I have more authorization to do with this one here, right? You can see I can do something with the, uh, if I can set the configuration here, uh, I can reload also, right? I can show the command here, but you see, on this one, I have very, very limited here, right? So now I am now I am privileged. Exact mode. I want to I want to make some change in the configuration here. I have to go to the I have to go to the global configuration mode. So in order to do that, I have to put the config here. Terminal. I I I I enter the command the config terminal. I hit enter. So now you see, I change it to the config here. You see. You see the problem here. 
I have the conflict and the, the power side here. That means I'm in the global compression mode here. Okay. So now in the global compression mode, right now I see, right now I'm in the global compression mode here. Global configuration. Okay. So in the global compression mode, I have the authorization to change the, 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 the switch name. I, I have authorization to, to set the password or is it negative? Okay. So now see. What I can do with the stuff very simple conversion is switch. Right, so we think about if I want to by the default, right? By the default, it's a name, it's a street here, but I want to change it's a name, so I will change the host name. I put it at FW1 here. So see, it changed from the switch name to the F, 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 sorry, F, W1 here. That is the name of the street. Right? And also if, if I can I can compress uh, some of the other configuration for the street also. But for now, I said you to remember that when you work with the iWare here with the package chaser, you have to understand. You have to understand the mode. And the first thing is the user exec mode. The second one is play village exec mode, and the third one is a it is a global compression mode. Here. Okay. So from the global compression mode, I can go to the I can go to the every single sub interface. Also, right? you see for the switch here, you have the twenty four port of the Part Ethernet, right? And you have the two port of giga, gigabit Ethernet. So I can I can go to the further mode. It is sub interface mode. Then by this one, I want to go to the interface of the fast Ethernet, the zero slot one here. So I can put in the interface and add zero slot one. And see, it changed it from the corporate. And right now, I have the problem of corporate and I add here. That means interface. Uh, and right now, I'm standing in the interface F zero slot one here. Okay. Or so from this one I can shut down or, or, or activate for here. So we'll see I want to shut it down, I put the shutdown down right. So see it shut it down the, the port here. Okay, so that that to uh that I want that to uh, summarize you to something here. You when I work with iOS, iOS, you have the four, basically you have the four modes. The first one is the user exact mode, create the here. Now from the user exit mode, you want to go to the you want to go to the the privilege exit mode, you put the enable command, you have the you have the hash uh, from here. That is the user uh, privilege exit mode here. And from the privilege exit mode, if you want to go to the global compression mode, you have to put a comment here, config. Let me know. So from that one, you will have the config here. And you have the hash power here. Huh? So this one, you are in the global configuration mode. You can change the name, you can set the password, and you can change the, the banner. And the last one is that you can go to the interface mode or the line mode, right? You can go say you about you want to go to the interface, you can put a short a short key uh, uh short key here, I and T is okay, it understand it's the interface. So we go to F, you know, slash one, and in that one you have you go to the corporate. Here, that means you are now in the sub interface mode. Here, interface mode. Here. Any questions so far? How would you uh, bring back the port we just shut down? You have you put a comment no shut, no shut, yeah. So if you want to bring it back, you put uh, you shut down right. You want to put it. You have no shutdown or no shut install here. Uh, you, you bring it back. So in basically or in the iOS for any command, if you want to disable it, you put the no before that. That's all. Okay. So when you call the IP address and you want to disable IP address, you put the no before that. Okay, so I think this one is a simulation here. Oh. Please make sure you play with. 
Hello everyone, this is our Cisco Packet Tracer creating PDUs in simulation mode video. What does that mean? That means we're going to be creating messages that are moved between devices in this network and we're going to be able to open up those messages later on and view them. Now a PDU is a protocol data unit. It's just a message type that's going to be transferring between network devices. So in previous chapters, we've used Cisco Packet Tracer in real time mode, as we see in the bottom right corner with the clock. What we're going to be doing today is going into simulation mode, and here is the place where we can create these PDUs and view their content. So let's get started and get into simulation mode. To go into simulation mode in the bottom right corner, we're going to click on the gray stopwatch that's hiding in the back. When you click on the gray stopwatch, we see that we're now in simulation mode and the stopwatch has come to the front. Now in simulation mode, we have this simulation panel. We'll have an event list. We'll be able to reset our simulation at any time, have a constant delay or remove it as network traffic goes across the network. We'll also be able to control the simulation by using back and forward buttons, as well as an auto capture play button, which is like a hands-free mode to have it just play. Down below, we can filter what type of messages we want to see with these PDUs we're going to create and what type of messages we don't want to see. Even further below, there's this little left arrow, which we want to click on this because this is going to give us an actual event simulation pane where we can actually see multiple PDUs in one moment. Also gives us some control for getting rid and deleting our PDUs. So let's get started. We have our network. We have the simulation mode on. Let's go ahead and take a look at our two envelopes. The first envelope is known as a simple PDU. This is a basic message, which is really a ping that we can create and target a destination. Let's go ahead and click on it. Add simple PDU. Our cursor is going to change to an envelope with a plus button. We'll click on the PC as the source, and then we'll click on the laptop as the destination. And now we'll see a message is waiting to be sent. It's wanting to move. And inside of our simulation panel, we'll see the message there as well. We actually get two messages from this. One is a ping known as ICMP and one is an ARP. Down below, what we want to do though, is we're going to click the capture forward button and we'll watch our traffic move each time we click this button. Click it once, we watch the traffic go to the wireless router. We can click it again and click it one more time and we watch the wireless router send it over to the laptop and the smartphone. From there, the laptop and the smartphone are going to choose to respond or not respond. The laptop was the target, and it's going to choose to respond backwards. So we'll just click clicking the capture forward button until eventually the message makes it all the way back to the PC with a green check mark. And there we go. We'll get the green check mark on the PC message. Now, the messaging will continue for a little bit longer. We can just continue by using capture forward. And again, until we get back to the laptop and the laptop responds backwards. And the PC again gets the check mark for success of receiving a message. Now, as easy and fun as that is, inside of the list here, you can actually walk through and watch the traffic going from the current device to where? The wireless device, the wireless router to the smartphone, wireless router to the laptop. You can actually track the messages as they're going back and forth here. Now, there's another type of message that we can utilize as well, and that's something called the complex PDU. So let's go ahead to the bottom, and we want to delete the current event by using the delete button. And now we want to create a new PDU, which is called the complex PDU. That's the envelope with the little message on it. So click add complex PDU. And now we can go from PC and then, of course, target the destination laptop PC by clicking on it. And this complex PDU screen auto fills in the destination IP address. The source IP we don't need to fill in because it's coming from a PC already. The sequence number, we can create one that we want. How about two as the initial sequence number? We can set a periodic time interval for how often should this test go out, or just leave it as a one-shot time interval over a period of seconds. Let's try periodic. With periodic, we can put in five seconds. We're just going to keep running through, and every five seconds, it'll do another test. The application type right now is ping by default. Look at all the different types of traffic we can choose to send with the complex PDU. We'll keep it as ping, though. Once we hit create, we see it's down below instead of our event list. Also, we see it in the simulation panel. Now, again, we can use capture forward or we can do the auto capture play. 
Let's increase the speed a little bit by moving our slider forward. And then we're going to do the auto capture play button. And we'll watch the traffic move. PC to the wireless router. Wireless router didn't know where to go with it at the moment. So it goes out to everybody. Wireless router figures out where the target's going to be. It goes to the laptop. Laptop responds back to the wireless router. Wireless router responds back to the PC. And we'll get a green check mark. And that's awesome. But it doesn't stop because we have it as periodic over a period of five seconds. So that ping message is going to keep going out from that PC, hitting the laptop, and the laptop responding back on our set time interval. So with Cisco Packet Tracer, it doesn't end here. You can make this as complicated as you want or as easy as you want. With that being said, reset the simulation using the reset simulation button. And that starts us from the beginning again. And then I can delete that message down below. Please make sure you play with PDU creation and being able to test out connectivity. Because in the next video, we're going into viewing the contents of those PDU messages and taking a closer look at the data that's actually inside of them. Okay, is that is the way to view the PDU protocol data you need. Hello everyone, this is our Cisco Packet Tracer viewing the contents of PDUs, known as protocol data units, video. In this video, we're going to go through and walk through the actual movement of data as it goes from one source to one destination, and we're going to take a look at the PDU information as the traffic moves. So once PDUs are created and captured, we'll be able to view the contents of a PDU by either clicking on the actual PDU inside of our event list, or by actually clicking on the message within the network topology itself. So let's get started. What we need to do first is be in simulation mode. So we'll go over to simulation mode, which is the stopwatch. After we're in simulation mode, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a complex PDU. We'll click on the complex PDU button. After clicking on the complex PDU button, we'll pick our source of the PC, and we're going to type in the IP address of this server. The destination IP address of that server, 208.67.220.220. The source IP address we don't need. It's coming from the PC. Sequence number, we'll pick one of one. And for the time interval, we'll put in there five seconds. We can go ahead and click Create PDU. And we see down below, we have it in our simulation panel. We can double click that fire button and we see it's waiting to be sent out here inside of our simulation panel. We'll turn off the constant delay, fire the button it again, and now we're gonna increase the speed and do auto capture play. From there we see the message moving, it's gonna try to make its way to that cisco.com server. It goes to the cable modem, crosses to the internet, it makes it to the cisco.com server, and the cisco.com server should respond all the way back to that PC. While it's going, you can actually keep watch on the event list and you can see it moving from last device where it's at currently, moving from device to device throughout the transfer of this message. We have a success green check mark. At this time, we're gonna uncheck the auto capture play. And now we can actually take a look at those different messages. ICMP is the message that I created. What we can actually do is double click in this list at any point in time when that message is moving. For example, the message is moving from cisco.com, the web server, and it's going to internet, which is our internet cloud. In order for us to do that, we can double click on the green square in the information column. Another way to get to this window as well is if you close it, you can also just double click on the message itself on the network topology, and it again will open. Inside of here, we'll be able to take a look at the OSI model tab, the inbound PDU details tab, the outbound PDU details. The OSI model tab is awesome. This is going to show you how the packet is processed at each layer of the OSI model by the current device. Right now, as we're crossing the internet, it's a physical cabling connection, port 5 on one device, the coax cable on another. You can click on these to see different information regarding what's going on in those layers. The inbound PDU details tab, this only applies that the PDU you selected is being received on the device. It's not going to appear if the PDU originated from that device. This tab shows exactly what is in the headers of the PDU known as a protocol data unit. It's broken up into header type and the individual fields in each header. 
The outbound PDU details area is going to show similar information for outgoing packets. This tab only applies if the device has a PDU to send. So let's let this traffic go a little bit further. We'll double click on it as the traffic is going from the cable modem to the wireless router. When I double click on it here, it selects that message. Again, I can open the message using the info square on the right or by double clicking on the wireless router's message itself on the left. Here we see more information than the previous message we looked at. We have the OSI model with our seven layers. We can click on layer one as the traffic's arriving incoming on the wireless router. We can go to layer two and see more information, layer three regarding IP addressing and more, and even take a look at the outbound layers on the right side. Finally, we have the inbound PDU details, where again we can see exactly the information in, broken into header type and the individual fields regarding the traffic information. So that's it for this video. Make sure you practice and play with traffic moving across a network and being able to open up that traffic utilizing the PDU features inside of Cisco Packet Tracer. Okay, so the policy simulation you, you, you can try it out with a privacy policy Let's see what it will have. Because we don't know where it is. This one. Yeah, this one, I think this is the last one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. Hello, everyone. This is our Cisco Packet Tracer file types walkthrough video. In this video, we're going to walk through three different types of Packet Tracer file extensions that you may see in your Cisco Academy courses. So let's get started. This activity I have up right here, you may have seen it before. This may have come from a previous chapter. In this activity, we have a PC hooked to a wireless router, a wireless router to a cable modem connected to the internet and connected to a Cisco.com web server. And there's this laptop sitting out there for wireless. Well, let's go into the actual file type that this is. At the top of our window, we see it's a PKT file. A PKT file is a packet tracer file where you've just opened up packet tracer and you've built the network from scratch. Okay, so the first type of the packet tracer is a PKT here. PKT that means you open the packet tracer and you build the on topology from the scratch. You, you, you drag and drop all into the router and the, and the and the chip and the PC and you interconnect them together. That is when you build your own topology from the scratch. Here. With this type of environment here, we can actually add a background image like we've seen before. So we'll click on set tile background and then I can click on browse. And on my desktop, I have an estate image file embedding feature save. And now I and now I'm going to click activity file so I don't need to send the file of the graphic as an attachment to PKT. Now we're in a link where I can click PKA file. Okay, that's the first thing that play PKT. PKT that means you build the ontology from scratch. The second one is it, a PKA. PKA is the package as an activity file. So in the PKA file, you already have the topology and you will have some instruction also. And you have to follow the instruction to do with the package tracer. And here we see this is a packet tracer troubleshooting wireless lab. Inside of this page that we're on, there's a link where I can click and get the PKA file for packet tracer. So we'll go ahead and click on that. I'll get a download window where I'm going to open up this packet tracer activity. And this is going to be what's called a PKA or an activity file, not just a PKT like we saw before. With the PKA file, what we're actually going to see here, and I'm going to close off the profile, what we're going to see here is that we have the lab activity just like before. I'll resize my. And so we see this one is a PKA file. And in the PKA file, after you download and open it, you already have the topology on this one. You, have, you don't have to build your own topology. I window a little bit, but what comes with the PK? Okay, and so you see, you had the instruction to go with the with the PK file. So, so you have to follow this instruction here and to do with the the activity. A is also an instruction window, and in this instruction window, we have walkthrough for what we need to do to complete this assignment. At the bottom of this activity window, we even see it supports a completion percentage. This will track 
my actual successful configuration of this lab. And as I successfully configure the lab, that completion score is going to be counting upwards towards 100%. On the right side, we have a pre-built network. We also have the ability inside of here to not only, of course, read the instructions as mentioned, but there's a check results feature. With that grading scale saying I'm at 0%, I can click on check results and I might be able to get more feedback. The original feedback shows the activity is incomplete. Keep working at it. There's a connectivity task tab where sometimes you can even see what's being tested on for maybe one PC talking with another. If it's enabled for the course, you'll actually have the ability to do assessment items and be able to see the exact items that you're getting graded wrong on. It helps you out when you're trying to figure out what you're doing incorrectly. I'll go ahead and close this check results window. And again, we're back to the lab environment. So inside of this lab environment for PKA files, you'll be tested on successfully fixing a problem or building a network from the ground up. Either way, you need to get comfy with using Packet Tracer, and now you know the different extensions of PKT, PKZ, and PK. Okay. Assessment time, you go ahead and have for this one. Okay. Okay. See, that is a sum of the overview of the Packet Tracer here. Now we have the one tech, one activity. You have the castor. Sorry, you have a castor from that tool to install and fill the package itself. So see what I have. Okay, let me. I think for this one, you also have to submit the package itself. Okay, so let me open the what is the capstone to to here. Yes, this one, right? You have to install the user package chaser. So, user download it already, right? User already, sorry, 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 sorry. Download it already. Very simple. Very simple. You have almost you have nothing to do this one. Right? User, watch it again video and answer some of the questions here. Okay, so I think that. That is for the package chaser to try to practice the package chaser and anything you find a challenge, you just uh, send me the email or you can uh, join my office hour or you can ask me the, any question on the class. So I think that I, we, we should move to the part two here. Uh, let me uh, stop the recording. I want to, to, to start the new one.